Hi, I'm Dennis O'Hara with the Stoneham Coalition for a Safe and Healthy Community. And today we're having a community conversation with Elizabeth Vallett and Ashley Hall on addiction prevention and treatment, more specifically nicotine addiction, including both tobacco products and vaping products. So Elizabeth Vallett and Ashley Hall, thank you for joining me today. I'd like to get started um, with Elizabeth, but can you give us a little bit of information about the Stoneham Coalition and uh, tell me the, the, uh, the goals and the mission? Sure. The Stoneham Coalition is a community group here in Stoneham. Um, it's free for anyone to join at any time. They meet monthly on Monday evenings. The mission of the group um, is Stoneham Coalition is to address the epidemic of drug and alcohol abuse in our community through education, advocacy, environmental changes, and promoting and creating opportunities for healthy and responsible behavior. Um, so it's just a group of local citizens that get together, um, also has professionals, parents, substance use um, professionals, government, um, the police department, everyone just coming together to work together to educate about um, preventing drug and alcohol addiction in Stoneham and to really provide um, communities with programming and workshops, networking, any type of support that we can give to individuals and families who might be suffering from addiction or have family members suffering from addiction um, and also focusing on mental health and bullying in the community. So really just being an advocate in a community group to provide resources and education and really just get together and focus on ways to better the community. Wonderful. Great. And um, one of the initiatives that we want to talk about today is the initiative uh, to make the community aware and sort of combat the problem of nicotine addiction that um, is still actually plaguing our communities, even though it sometimes seems like, um, you know, other types of addiction and, and drugs get um, sort of the spotlight at any given moment. Um, but we still unfortunately have a, a problem with nicotine addiction. And today we have Ashley Hall with us, who um, is going to tell us a little bit about uh, the resources available for people who are still struggling with nicotine and not just with uh, tobacco and cigarettes, but now we have the whole problem of, of vaping, correct? Exactly. Yes. So I think it's really important to remember that uh, nicotine is one of the most addictive substances in the world. So it's important to remember that it's a chronic relapsing condition and it's not just one thing we talk about once, but to always look out for your loved ones who may be using tobacco products. And tobacco products, like you said, Dennis, do include um, cigarettes and cigars, but over the past few years, we saw those products become electronic in the form of vaping products. Now, vaping products do go by many different names. So e-cigarettes, e-cigs, hookah sticks, vapes, vape pens, lots of different names, that, but they all mean the same thing. In the public health field, we often use the term electronic nicotine delivery systems because that's exactly what they are. It's a way that nicotine is still being delivered to the body, but in an electronic way. A lot of times we are seeing the most popular age group using vaping products are youth, teenagers, sometimes even middle school students and young adults. Uh, and that's because these products look nothing like what we're used to cigarettes looking and smelling like. So these young kids were tricked into thinking these products were just water and they have over 8,000 flavors. So kids say, oh, this, this must be harmless. It's bright pink or rainbow and it tastes like bubble gum. When in fact, those products are full of nicotine. Uh, and when the young adult, when the youth brain is exposed to nicotine, um, it disrupts memory, sleeping, concentration, learning, um, many of the essential functions that youth are working on for positive growth development. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And so how do they get into it? Like what, what's the most common ways that, uh, that youth are introduced to vaping and or you know, other forms of, of smoking? So unfortunately, um, social media and the way the tobacco industry has marketed these products has played a huge role in youth uptake. Uh, 
when they are in brightly colored packages with all kinds of flavors um, that directly appeals to youth. So we say so they're, these products are sweet, cheap, and easy to get. Well, at least they used to be. Fortunately, in Massachusetts, we've taken steps. But the way this started is, like I said, the flavors, they were really cheaply priced. You could get um, a disposable or a quick vape product for as cheap as five to eight bucks, so pretty affordable for, for teenagers and young adults, um, and then easy to get. So you used to, you used to be able to buy these products um, in convenience stores, gas stations, um, sometimes even grocery stores, um, your everyday store where kids are often going. Um, that's how we started the this. It was actually declared an epidemic by the U.S. Surgeon General, uh, youth vaping. Fortunately, in Massachusetts, at the end of 2019, we passed a law um, called an Act Modernizing Tobacco Control. And this law does many, many things, but the overall goal was to reduce, reduce youth use of tobacco products um, and as well as all use, uh, use of tobacco products, specifically with flavors, because we know that's one of the number one reasons people start to use tobacco. Mm -hmm. So you no longer can buy flavored tobacco products in regular retail tobacco stores. We are one of the first states in the country to remove, to pass this law, to remove all flavored tobacco, including menthol. And to include menthol in our law was a huge piece for racial equity because of the health disparities it's caused in Black, Latinx, and LGBTQ communities. So we're fortunate that those tactics of sweet, cheap, and easy to get don't necessarily apply to the state of Massachusetts anymore. Well, that is definitely a big step. And I wanted to ask, because uh, we, we've talked about this before, that um, you know sometimes people uh, get, you know, don't understand the, the, the health um, effects of vaping because like when you walk by someone who's smoking tobacco it's kind of like you know chimney smoke hits your nose and it's very unpleasant but sometimes you walk by someone vaping and you think oh blueberries wow but yet the the, the fumes are just as toxic to to the human body correct i mean they're, they're, it's not like you're smelling something pleasant when you're smelling the blueberry vape yes exactly so all of these flavors honestly act as a mask uh, what flavors do in tobacco products is hide the true harsh effects that's happening inside of the body, as well as outside of the body. Because like you mentioned, of course, there's harm to the person who is inhaling the cigarette or the vaping product, but there's also harm to the people walking by inhaling secondhand smoke. So some of the chemicals that we know are in um, vaping products are kind of similar to cigarettes, actually. So um, things like uh, acetone, which is also found in nail polish remover, um, propylene glycol, which is often found in other beauty products that are put on your skin. Um, and a lot of times people say, well, flavoring is safe. There's flavorings in our food and in our drink. But uh, your digestive system is meant to uh, consume flavors. Your respiratory system for breathing is not. So it's very, very different. Uh, the, a lot of people think, well, vaping is just water vapor and water is good for you, so it must be healthy, but it's actually an aerosol. Um, and an aerosol is essentially uh, a spray or a cloud of chemicals. Um, so in addition to addictive nicotine, there's all those other chemicals I mentioned. And if you think about it, um, something else that's an aerosol is hairspray. So if you take hairspray and spray it on your arm, it will leave that really sticky residue, right? That's hard to come off. If you take that analogy, it's kind of similar to what's happening inside of your body. If you make hairspray the cloud from a vaping product and you make your, your arm, your lungs, it's coating your body with chemicals, um, making it difficult to breathe as well as impacting your memory and cognitive function. Mm -hmm. And what are some of the other health effects that uh, you know long-term exposure to these chemicals can, can do? So we're still conducting a lot of research. So it, it's still yet to, to there hasn't been too much long-term research yet. But what I do know from my experience being out in the community is um, the huge impact it's had on youth, particularly athletes. So there are many athletes who were seniors in high school, number one on their sports team, captain of their sports team, and then they started vaping. And at first, their vaping addiction impacted their physical ability on the team. So they weren't 
keeping up with team practice. They, they were went from being the first person to finish the sprints to the last person, and then they weren't playing as much. So it was impacting them physically. And then it's actually against the most school policies and school athlete policies to vape. So when coaches and parents find out that that student is vaping, um, I've seen high school college high school athletes with college scholarships in our community get their scholarship taken away. So it's had this overall significant impact and even students who aren't athletes. Um, the young adult brain is not fully developed until at least 25 years old. So when you start introducing addiction at such a young age of 12 or 13, it's priming that brain for future addiction. So, and it might even turn to other substances. We know that youth who start vaping at a young age are four times more likely to start using cigarettes as they get older. Wow. So, um, yeah, so that could lead to sort of a, a lifestyle of addiction if you get um, introduced before your brain is fully fully developed. So, um, exactly. So let's talk about some of the things that you can do if you, um, if you, if you're already vaping or smoking, or if you recognize in someone close to you that, uh, is getting into to smoking and vaping and what, um, you know, information you can, uh, you can get. Absolutely. So fortunately, this is the good news that we do have resources available in Massachusetts. So we have two specific resources designed for youth to help them quit vaping. The first is called This Is Quitting. This is powered by the Truth Initiative. This is, all of these resources I'm about to tell you about are completely free. Um, so This Is Quitting is an automated texting program. So we know that um, the number one age group who vapes is teens. In fact, one in three teens in Massachusetts do vape. Um, so all, and most teenagers do always have their cell phone on them. So all a teen or a youth has to do is text the phone number 88709. They text the keyword vape free mass and they automatically will receive text message to their own phone um, on support to quit smoking. They can even text certain keywords like craving or slip or Massachusetts info to get specific coaching back about what they're going through. Now that's automated. There are some youth who say, I wanna to talk to a live human. I wanna to talk to somebody and get that personal connection. And so we have that as well. My Life, My Quit um, is trained live coaching specialists who know how to help youth quit any type of tobacco product. But again, specifically, we know most youth are vaping. They can call or text to get that live coach on the other line. Um, this is the phone number and this is the keyword here. And they even have a website they can go to to learn more information as well. Mm -hmm. I can also talk to you about some other programs that we have. So for anyone um, over the age of 12 who's trying to quit any type of tobacco, we have the Massachusetts Smokers Helpline at 1-800-QUIT-NOW. Uh, like I said, it's for anyone older than 12, any type of tobacco, and you get connected to a trained live coaching specialist. Um, the phone number again is 1-800-QUIT-NOW. Uh, a coach will talk to you. They'll do some kind of intake stuff, your name, your address, things like that. They'll talk to you about your addiction. So what kind of tobacco products are you using? How often do you use them? How long have you been using them? And they'll help you create a personalized quit plan based on what might trigger you um, and what's going to be the best method for you to quit. In addition to that coaching um, help, you can also get up to eight weeks of nicotine replacement therapy, which is just medication, things like the patch, the gum, lozenges, et cetera, delivered to your doorstep completely for free, just for enrolling and participating in the program. It's also available online, or um, you can also get automated emails as well. So every time you, you know, you're on your phone or going online, you'll get reminders that you're not alone through your quit attempt. So this is, uh, you can actually call and speak with professionals, um who can sort of, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're thinking about relapsing, if you're, you know, I just, I really need, you know, need one now, you know, they'll, they'll kind of talk you through it. 
Exactly. So you'll get a, a live coaching person on the other line and this is their job and they're, they're available 24 seven coaches are available in English and Spanish. And we also have a translation service for 190 other languages. So I can almost guarantee you no matter what language you speak, that speak, there's a coach ready to support you through anything you need through your quit attempt. I'd also just like to point out that we have some new programs for priority populations who are trying to quit tobacco. So we have a perinatal program for women who are currently pregnant because we know that there are some populations where smoking is a little, quitting smoking is a little bit harder. So anyone who's currently pregnant trying to quit smoking, you can get nine coaching calls and you'll get the same dedicated quit coach every single time you call. You'll get five during pregnancy, four postpartum, and upon completion of the program, you'll actually get a $65 uh, MasterCard, MasterCard gift card. Um, so that might be some nice diaper money for a new mom just getting started bringing home her newborn. We also have a behavioral health program because we know that quitting is especially unique for anyone who has a behavioral health diagnosis. So this is a coach who has been trained in how to help somebody quit tobacco who has any one of these conditions. So we'll get seven coaching calls. And again, anyone is eligible for that free eight weeks of medication. We also have the American Indian Commercial Tobacco Program because I think it's really important for everybody to remember there is a difference between commercial tobacco and traditional tobacco. Um, traditional tobacco is used by some American Indian communities for sacred and ceremonial use. It doesn't have the addictive component and it's not used recreationally. Commercial tobacco is kind of what we've been talking about this whole time. Mm -hmm. It's that recreational use that has the nicotine that's put into cigarettes and vaping products. So anyone who identifies as American Indian, um, this is more of a culturally competent program for you. Um, it talks about the difference between commercial and traditional tobacco and how to still value your American Indian traditions and culture um, with traditional tobacco. So in all of these coaches also identify as American Indian. They have their own website with some culturally competent materials and their own phone number. Mm -hmm. We also have our young adult uh, tobacco and vaping program. So we talked about the youth program we have. Then we said we have all these programs for adults. What about in the middle, that kind of college age population, ages 18 to 24? Um, so we created a program for them as well. So coaches, coaching specialists who know how to help that age group, um, again, really any type of tobacco, but most often this age group is using vaping products. Mm -hmm. And so all these um, programs that we're talking about today, they're, um, are they free of charge? Are they, um, they take Yes, insurance? everything's completely free. So um, they will ask you sometimes for your insurance information and your name and everything, but you will never ever be charged. It's totally free to call or text and utilize any of these resources. Mm -hmm. Great. And so um, getting back to the Boys and Girls Club, I know, um, Elizabeth, uh, we were talking about different programs that the Boys and Girls Club helps um, helps run. And I'm sure, I mean, you, you, you've given out all this information, but it'll also be available on the Stoneham Coalition website on a um, sort of a resource uh, page so that you can um, access directly to the um the websites that have the information. Um, but Elizabeth, so, so uh, when we get back to the Boys and Girls Club, let's talk a little bit about some of the things that um, the Boys and Girls Club does to sort of address the issue on a peer-to-peer -peer level. I mean, I know you talked about like anti-bullying. I know a lot of sometimes kids might get into smoking or vaping as a result of, if not bullying, at least peer pressure. Um, and how does the Boys and Girls Club sort of address that? especially at our new teen center where it's um, only for middle schoolers right now. We have a really great staff there that are really able to relate to the kids and um, always pull them aside and talk to them one-on-one -on -one to make sure that they're okay and to find out what's going on. Um, just really make it a safe and welcoming environment so the youth feel comfortable talking to our staff um, if anything's going on. And um, really just focusing on that peer-to-peer -peer level. So making um, safe groups, like if a group wants to get together and talk about anything that's going on, um, they definitely can. 
So really just making it like a warm and welcoming environment where kids feel comfortable um, and having giving them a trusted adult so they can have those conversations. Yeah. Yeah, we're really excited because the uh, the teen center is fairly new to our community. And um, give us the details. What, where where is it, and when is it open? Yeah, so it's open now. Um, it's on Central Street. Um, like I mentioned, right now it's mostly for middle schoolers, so fifth to eighth graders. Um, so it's really exciting. They seem to like really love the space. Um, it's just been a really great environment for that age group to have somewhere that they can go after school. It's really close to the middle school, so they just are able to walk over, and um, it's just been really great. Yeah. And so any um, teenager that uh, may have questions that might not want to call the 800 numbers, but would rather, you know, talk to somebody in person, can always go there, and there's always an adult or um, other mentor there to sort of help. Well, Ashley, thank you so much for joining us today. Is there anything else you'd like to uh, talk about before we go? Sure, I'll just put up on the screen some websites that everybody can go to for more information. So we have brand new campaigns, which is pretty exciting. Um, so we have information for adults at Get Outraged. Um, we have information for youth to educate themselves about vaping with facts, no filters. And then we have a general website for anyone trying to quit tobacco of any age for an, any type of tobacco. Um, and then if you want to learn more about our statewide tobacco um, program, you can go to the last link as well. Um, I can also always be contacted whether you are a concerned resident and just want to learn more about the resources available, or if you are in the public health or education field, I'm always available to come give presentations like this um, to you or your organization. So I'm more than happy to help my contact info. Um, is on the screen. And I also have a Facebook page where I try to always share updates and resources as well. So feel free to contact me anytime. And I'm sure Elizabeth is more than happy to be contacted as well. Wonderful. And yeah, so one thing we um, we can should touch on uh, real, very quickly is that the, the resources that you've provided aren't just directed toward people who are trying to quit, but also people that are trying to help them quit. Mentors and um, parents and, you know, people, educators who see what's happening with, with the youth uh, participants. Exactly. We know that people who get support from others are more successful in their quit attempts. So even if you're watching this and you don't use tobacco yourself, um, if you know, if you are a teacher and you know that your students are vaping, or if you're a clinician and you have patients who are smoking, you can share these, you can and should share these resources with the people you work with. Um, there's also some other specific resources um, for different organizations like schools and healthcare organizations that I'm happy to chat about anytime if anybody here wants to contact me. Great. And again, we have a, uh, we'll have a page on the stonemcoalition.org website that has a list of the resources we've been talking about today, as well as how to get in touch with Ashley. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. I'm Dennis O'Hara with the Stoneham Coalition for a Safe and Healthy Community. And I wanna thank Elizabeth Vallett and Ashley Hall for coming on today to talk about nicotine. Mm -hmm.